Before we get into today's episode, I want to let you know about a source of powerful free resources to help you as a parent or grandparent get equipped to invest in the faith of the next generation. Our Next Gen website has been designed to help empower you to navigate tough issues with the young people in your life. At NextGen, you'll find articles, entertainment reviews from a Christian perspective, parenting stories, helpful parenting guides, and even answers to the tough questions. All these resources are free as you engage on the front line of raising the next generation for Jesus. So why not register today at premierinsight.org forward slash resources to receive free resources from NextGen. That's premierinsight.org forward slash resources. And now it's time for today's podcast. The Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, open our eyes today to see the wonderful truths contained in your Word. Thank you that as we listen to and apply your Word, you are able to breathe new life into us by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 122 I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that's closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 21. When Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men, who have caused trouble all over the world, have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they put Jason and the others on bail and let them go. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. But when the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, some of them went there too, agitating the crowds and stirring them up. 
the believers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. Those who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day, with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, What is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, He seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. They took him and brought him to a meeting of the Arapachus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So, You are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, He himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of our own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. At that Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysus, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. Nehemiah chapter 3 Eliashib the high priest and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated, and as far as the Tower of Hananel. The men of Jericho built the adjoining section, and Zakur, son of Imri, built next to them. The fish gate was rebuilt by the sons of Hesanar. They laid its beams and put its doors and bolts and bars in place. Merimoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakoz, repaired the next section. Next to him, Meshalum, son of Berechiah, the son of Meshesbel, made repairs, and next to him Zadok, son of Barna, also made repairs. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to work under their supervisors. 
the Jeshenor gate was repaired by Joda, son of Pesiah, and Mashalum, son of Bezodiah. They laid its beams and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. Next to them, repairs were made by the men of Gibeon and Mispah, Meliata of Gibeon and Jadon of Merinoth, places under the authority of the governor of Trans-Euphrates. Uziel, son of Harhiah, one of the goldsmiths, repaired the next section, and Hananiah, one of the perfume makers, made repairs next to that. They restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Raphiah, son of Hor, ruler of half a district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section. Adjoining this, Jediah, son of Harumaph, made repairs opposite his house. And Hattush, son of Hashabaniah, made repairs next to him. Malkiah, son of Harim. And Hashub, son of Pahath Moab, repaired another section and the tower of the ovens. Shalom, son of Halahesh, ruler of half the district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section with the help of his daughters. The valley gate was repaired by Hanun and the residents of Zenoah. They rebuilt it and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. They also repaired a thousand cubits of wall as far as the dung gate. The dung gate was repaired by Malkiar, son of Rechab, ruler of the district of Beth Hakarem. He rebuilt it and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. The fountain gate was repaired by Shulun, son of Kolhoza, ruler of the district of Mizpah. He rebuilt it, roofing it over and putting its doors and bolts and bars in place. He also repaired the wall of the pool of Siloam by the king's garden, as far as the steps going down from the city of David. Beyond him, Nehemiah, son of Azbuk, ruler of half the district of Beth Zor, made repairs up to a point opposite the tombs of David, as far as the artificial pool and the house of heroes. Next to him, the repairs were made by the Levites under Rehum, son of Bani. Beside him, Hashabiah, ruler of half the district of Kela, carried out repairs for his district. Next to him, the repairs were made by their fellow Levites under Benoi, son of Henadad, ruler of the other half of the district of Kela. Next to him, Ezar, son of Yeshua, ruler of Mispar, repaired another section from the point facing the ascent to the armory as far as the angle of the wall. Now next to him, Baruch, son of Zabai, zealously repaired another section from the angle to the entrance of the house of Eliashab, the high priest. Next to him, Merimoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hikoz, repaired another section from the entrance of Eliashib's house to the end of it. The repairs next to him were made by the priests from the surrounding region. Beyond them, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs in front of their house, and next to them, Azariah, son of Misahai, and son of Hananiah, made repairs beside their house. Next to him, Banuai, son of Henadad repaired another section, from Azariah's house to the angle and the corner, and Palau, son of Uzai, worked opposite the angle and the tower projecting from the upper palace near the court of the guard. Next to him, Pedadiah, son of Parosh, and the temple servants living on the hill of Ephel, made repairs up to the point opposite the water gate toward the east and the projecting tower. Next to them, the men of Tekoa repaired another section from the great projecting tower to the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, the priest made repairs each in front of his own house. Next to them, Zadok, son of Imma, made repairs opposite his house. Next to him, Shemaiah, son of Shachaniah, the guard at the east gate made repairs. Next to him, Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaf, repaired another section. Next to them, Meshalum, son of Berechiah, made repairs opposite his living quarters. Next to him, Malkiah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs as far of the house of the temple servants and the merchants. Opposite the inspection gate and as far as the room above the corner, and between the room above the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and merchants made repairs. Father God, thank you for the blessing of your word, the Bible. I pray that as we listen each day, we will develop a greater understanding and appreciation of who you really are. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible.
This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton.